Have you ever wanted to play interesting chord voicings in worship, but not quite sure what you can do besides the obvious voicings you already know? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you some great ways in which you can spice up basic triads to get some really colorful voicings to add a lot of depth and dimension to your worship guitar playing. So let's get right to it. All right, to demonstrate these voicings, let me go ahead and play a 1645 in the key of G. That'll be G, E minor, C, and D. For all these voicings, I'll never play just the standard triad. I'm going to play the embellished versions, listen to what they sound like, pay attention to my picking and my rhythm, and afterwards, we'll come and break it down note for note so you can get those voicings into your own hands and use them on a Sunday. So there you have it, those are some embellished triads. And all that basically means, instead of playing the plain vanilla triads, nothing wrong with that, but we wanted to add in some flavor and some character. So what do I mean by plain vanilla triads? Well, if I played G, E minor, C, and D, with just straightforward triads, it'll sound like this, G, then E minor, then C, and then D. So we can hear G, E minor, C, D. That's kind of a plain vanilla sound. But what we wanted to bring in is some characters. So instead of playing G like this, I change it to a G add nine, which is simply this. Can you hear that sounds a little bit different than playing vanilla G triad to a G add nine. Then I did the same for E minor. So instead of playing an E minor triad, I played this. And for those of you who know your triads, you'll know that this is simply a G major triad shape. But when I play it over an E minor, I get what's known as an E minor seven chord because this D is a flat seven over D over the E minor seven chord. Then instead of playing a plain vanilla C triad, I played this, which is a C sus two triad. So I'm taking my third and it goes to the second. You might also recognize this, this is the same as a G sus4, but in this instance, because I'm playing it over C, it's C sus2. And then for the D, instead of playing this, or that, which would be like a plain vanilla D, I played this. And that is a D7. Now, because of that, the fact of the matter is that I'm adding in that C note. It's a flat seven over the D, which makes that a D7. So it'll sound like this. Right, so I added some other bells and whistles there. I'll show you that in a second. Plain vanilla triads, G, E minor, C, D. With our versions that we did, G add nine, E minor 7, C sus 2, and D7. 
It's just got a little bit more character when I play those voicings. Now, you don't want to always play uh, embellished versions of the chords and always add color and dimension like I'm doing here now, but you can use that sparingly. For this example, I just decided to embellish each and every chord. So that's it. Rhythmically, I did something like this from a picking point of view. And that's kind of how guitar parts are born. You play around the chord progression and you start to look for some melodic interests, some melodic hooks and those kind of things. So by picking this like this, it's very repetitive, right? So I'm kind of driving the point home of that G add nine. The same picking pattern, very close for the E minor seven. Then for the C sus2, instead of going straight to C sus2, I add where I'm hammering from the B note to the C note, which gives me a cool C sus2 sound. Then I did the same over the D. So I did the hammer on. which got me eventually to this E7. And that was the first part of the song. And technically speaking, when I ended on the D like this, that's the D5 because with my distorted sound here, that flat seven just kind of adds a little bit of nasty overtones, which I don't really want in the voicing, so I just took it off for that section. So let me go ahead and just play the intro part for you once more with the track. We're kind of running out of time, so the next video will cover the building section and then the following voicings that I played during sign of the chorus part. So if you're not already subscribed, make sure that you hit the subscribe button right now hit the bell icon and you'll get notifications when we release that video. And if you're watching this sometime in the future, we'll already link to the video if it's live by then in the description. So let me go ahead and play the whole part for you once again. We've just covered the kind of verse parts. We'll do the building part and the chorus parts in the following video. Here we go.